Well, today I've got this Vizio. It's a model E390-B1. And I thought I'd go over some real quick voltages and troubleshooting with you. In case you're having a problem with one of these, you can try to narrow it down, figure out what board's having the problem. This model uses a DU361XAD7 power supply. And the main board on this one, TXDCB02K06. Zero, zero. So let's go ahead and measure the voltages on the power supply board with the set in the off condition. So this is before I've pressed the power button. So the only thing that we should have on this one is the 12 volt source. So let's look at the 5 volt source. We have 0. The 12 volt source I have 12.59. 12.59, this is 12 volt audio, 12.51. These two pins are ground. And then we have the power supply on command. And then the dimming uh, on off command, because this one is an LED set. So up here on the top of the power supply, this is the LED driver board that sends the power to the light emitting diodes in the liquid crystal display. And back on the main board we have the same pins from the power supply so we should see almost the exact same thing unless they've crisscrossed them a little bit. Uh, looks like there's one less pin so there's no 5 volt source here so we, we see 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volt audio, ground, ground, power supply on off and then the dimming command. So let's go ahead and turn the set on first of all, and we'll look at the voltages. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with my probe on the power supply on off command, and I'm gonna hit the power button in three, two, one. As soon as I press the power button, we see it goes up to 4.87, so effectively five volts. Let's take a look at the dimming voltage. I'm over here on the power supply right now. It's 3.8. Well, it was 3.6 and it's dimming down. So that voltage controls the backlight brightness. And that's the bottom pin right here, same as the bottom pin on the power supply. So let's start on the main board. This connector right here is the connector that runs to the keypad, which is actually only one button on this set, as well as the remote control receiver. So uh, the very top pin is the 3.3 volts for the remote control receiver. And now the next pin is the remote control receiver output. And so if I press one of the keys, you can see the voltage kind of fluctuate around there. So when I'm not pressing it, it's close to 5 volts. When I press it, it drops down to a much lower voltage. If we hooked up the oscilloscope, we could actually see a square wave signal on that. And that's the pin that the microprocessor uses to decode the remote control pulse. Now, uh, we've got 3.3 here, and this is with the set off again, so the set is not turned on. And now this pin right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th pin down. As I press the power button on it, you can see it goes down to 0.3 volts. So that is the power button input. And unfortunately, I don't have a service manual on this set, so I cannot tell you what the rest of the pins actually do, but I can just give you the voltages. So we'll start from the top here with the set on. We've got 3.17 with it off, it was 3.3. Next pin is remote control infrared input. I'm sure that one is ground. 3.3, zero, 3.3, that's the key switch. And we've got 2.96, I can't tell you what that one does unfortunately, five volts right there, 2.86 and zero volts on that one. So this one may have some kind of a uh, infrared blaster in there too to control a cable box possibly with one remote control. A lot of the new sets are doing that as well as it's a possibility it may have a Bluetooth enabled remote control receiver in the front of the set as well. So with the set off, let's take a look at some voltages on the main board. 
We've got these little standby regulator chips here. We've had problems in the past with those. Uh, this is the adjustment pin. This is the output pin. This is the input pin. So we've got 5 volts on the input, 3.3 on the output. And on this one you can measure the tab as well. The tab is connected to the center pin. This is a slightly larger regulator IC chip here. With the set off on this one we've got zero. So we'll come back to that one after I turn it on. Another small regulator IC over here. And that one's controlled when the set is on only. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, it's on now. Let's take a look at the voltages on it. 5 volts, 3.3 on the output, and the adjustment pin has got 2.06. We should see about 1.2 volts difference between the adjustment pin and the output pin. Let's take a look on this one. We've got 5 volts on the input, 3.3 on the output, and the adjust pin is grounded. Some of these little regulator ICs are fixed and other ones are adjustable. The adjustable ones typically you'll see, like on this one over here, a 1.2 volt difference between the adjust pin and the output pin at all times. Let's look at the voltages on these capacitors real quick as well. 1.2 volts. So the negative side is normally always grounded on these. 5 volts. 3.3. Twelve volts. These are very hard to get to, so be extremely careful. There's a heat sink right in the way here. Twelve volts on that one. Twelve volts on that one as well. One over here by the tuner. Three point three volts on that one. Now this is the audio portion of the set. This is where the audio twelve volts goes to these capacitors. It's a digital audio amplifier. And so what you'll uh, what you'll see here is the uh, output coils to smooth the square wave back to a sine wave for the speakers to actually use. So normally uh, one coil, one side of one coil will connect directly to the speaker line itself. So as you can see there's 6.16 volts on the speaker line itself. 6.16, 6.17 so if you're having a no sound issue, you might want to look at this. And the output of these should be about half of the main power supply voltage. So we've got 12.5 volts right there. So uh, about 6 is approximately half of the 12 volt supply. Uh, very hard to change these audio chips. It's on a little tiny heat sink. And once again, it's a digital amplifier. So it's a, a pulse width modulation type amplifier. Now let's just take a look real quickly at the LVDS cable. This set does not use a timing controller board per se. It's all built onto the LCD panel, which on this one appears to be part of the main set itself, which is becoming the trend on these newer TVs. So we can just take a quick look at some of the voltages over here. We have uh, 12 volts on the first lower pin and it's a black lead. It's probably the main VCC supply to the LCD panel. Take a look in the corner. Yeah, all these are 12 and a half or 12.5 volts. These four pins over here. So that's the main power supply, it appears. The rest of them are going to be a clock and data lines. If you had an oscilloscope, we could look at them. We could actually see the digital video uh, signal go into the LCD panel. We've done that on a, a previous model, so you might want to look back in my videos and you can find that one. See what the waveform should look like if you wanted to look at an oscilloscope. But if you're having a no video condition, you, you just might want to look to make sure on uh, these pins over here, they're all black. You want to make sure you have ground, zero volts on those. You could even uh, take your ohmmeter and look and you should have pretty close to zero ohms on that one as well. Make sure you have your 12 volts over here. And then you could probe the other pins. Like I'm seeing very close to about one volt on these things. So make sure you're in the volt position. Let's take a look down here and see if we get anything different. They're all very close. It's a, it's a LVDS is low voltage differential signal. So you've got uh, two lines, a positive and a negative. 
and uh, they go opposite directions, which is the differential. The timing controller or the LCD panel has a comparator. It looks at those two lines and it figures out the differential between them. And that's your digital data signal. Okay, so let's take a look at the LED portion of this set real quick. Uh, keep in mind on the power supply, when you see the shaded area that runs right through the middle of the transformer, that separates the cold portion of the set to the hot portion of the set. Let me move this back a little bit so you can see a little bit easier. So the hot portion of the set is connected directly to the AC line on this side. So all of this side of the circuit board in respect to your AC line, your AC main input is hot, which means virtually anything you touch over here uh, it could be a shock hazard to you if you're touching uh, a live or a neutral lead, a neutral wire, if you're standing, uh, you know, bare feet on a concrete floor and you accidentally touch anything over here, you could damage yourself, you could get shocked. So the shaded area is what differ differentiates the cold side of the set. And now the cold side of the set is grounded to common ground, which is like the jacks on the uh, main board. Uh, the ground portions up here on the liquid crystal panel, these little tabs are grounded to the LCD panel, as well as where it's labeled ground over here, it's all tied to common ground. This side's all tied to hot ground. So just be very careful uh, on these power supply boards and learn if you want to make a measurement, a voltage measurement over here on the hot side, you must be on hot ground. If you make a measurement over here on this side, you must be on cold ground. So let's take a look real quick here at the pins for the LEDs. So a little description up here just is labeled LED1, LED1. And I'm seeing about 2.2 volts on those two pins. And it's pin six and pin five. Pin four is no connection. Pin three is no connection. There's actually no wires connected to those. Now we've got pin two, which measures about 34 volts. And pin one is 34 volts as well. So let me shut the set off real quick here. And we'll take a peek. Okay, the set's off, the voltage is draining. I'm gonna turn the set back on real quick. And what I wanted to see was uh, does the voltage uh, ramp up as in pulse width modulation or does it stay pretty steady? And it does stay pretty steady, 34 volts. The other one's staying 2.5, 2.3, 2.2. So this one does vary a little bit as the brightness changes. The LED1 pin uh, varies with the uh, dimming command down here, which is 3.6 volts right now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video on the troubleshooting and voltages that you should have on your Vizio E390-B1. So with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin. I appreciate your views, your comments, your support. Uh, can't get back to you as much as I would love to answer all the questions that you guys post, but I appreciate you uh, following me. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715 as well. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.